Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Wednesday, January 29th, 2020. Uh, quite a bit to cover today, but uh, what I want to do is uh, we're going to get to Facebook and Microsoft. They are reported after the close today, or are reporting. I think they, we already must have seen Facebook, see a nice swoon down in the futures. And so I'm going to get to those two in a second, but as I often say, it's not the initial reaction. Let let the dust settle. We're going to get to those charts in just a second. But I wanted to do a quick update here um, because this always bears repeating, uh, for particularly for YouTube subscribers, uh, for those of you that follow either YouTube, the YouTube channel or RightSideOfTheChart.com. It is a uh, what it's called a, a, a freemium service. It's a mix of free and premium content. Just about every app that you've bought on your iPhone or your Android phone, uh, you either download the free app if you like it, great. You buy the premium app version, and that's what we do here. So, what what happens is every time I'll go in from time to time and release the premium content. Uh, just to clarify what that is, general market analysis, general technical analysis on the broad markets, that is uh, not all of it, uh, but uh, end of day commentary or end of day wraps, those are public content, uh, both on rightsideofthechart.com as well as uh, on the channel. And then once in a while, some educational posts, maybe some training examples, uh, and a couple other things, occasionally sector analysis, but for the most part, that's reserved as premium content. And then what I do, so you, if you're not a subscriber to the site, you follow the channel, so you can see what we do uh, is uh, 90 plus, easily 90 plus percent of what I trade is not the stock market. It's not those daily videos you see, you know, looking for months and months, waiting for, you know, sell signals or buy signals on, on the markets if it's in an up or down trend. Uh, uh, so the things we trade are everything but, which is st uh, individual stocks, sectors, sector ETFs, futures commodities, gold, precious metals, Bitcoin, uh, pretty much anything. If it's got a ticker I like, and I can chart it, I like to trade it. Uh, so uh, what I'm getting at here is every time I release these videos, I'll go in from time to time. If there's premium content, I'll release it after a, a limited period of time. And last night I went in and or yesterday released some of these. And I always get the same question. Why are you releasing something that's three or four weeks old? That is a limitation of YouTube. The video was recorded. I always put the date in the title so there's not any confusion. And in the beginning of the day, uh, video, I always state the date clearly so you know, you know, hey, heads up, it's not, you know, January 6 anymore. Uh, so just an FYI there. Pay attention to the dates there. Uh, again, it's a limitation of YouTube. It says, you know, when you go into, if you click a video there, uh, like this one, it's going to say uh, published on whatever date here. Let's see. Uh, it's going to show that date that it was changed from a private video to a public video. Again, a shortcoming of YouTube. They should mark that as the, uh, uh, obviously, as the date that uh, the video was recorded and uploaded to YouTube. So we'll move on. So pay attention to that. Now, same thing holds true for the website, rightsideofthechart.com. Uh, you can come in. Let's see here. We go here. Uh, let's go to the home page. If uh, I'm, I'm logged out here, so this is what you'll see if you come into the site. Uh, if you're a subscriber, obviously log in. You get a different home page. Everything else. But uh, when you scroll down, these are the recent posts. Anything with a key icon, that's pr uh, premium content. That will be released after a, a limited period of time. Um, you know, and, and again, why did I do that? Well, you, again, if you want to come in and see, well, you know, what other kind of things do we trade and, and, and look at and analyze? Like I said, it runs a gamut from you know the VIX to Bitcoin. Uh, these are just the latest posts here. Uh, you know, we hit our second target uh, profit target today for 21% gain on uh, GBTC, which is a Bitcoin trading proxy. It's a trust that uh, tracks Bitcoin. Uh, added, uh, uh, you know, new trade idea. And you can also uh, come into the site, whether you're a user or a subscriber or not, and hover up here on market analysis. And then it's sorted by your individual uh, group. So, you know, general market analysis on all asset classes. This is just about everything that I'm posting as long as it's related to some type of uh, security or asset class. But you can break it down. Equity market analysis, again, which uh, some but not all. I don't do the morning updates. That's premium content, midday updates, things like that. End of day updates are usually public content even here on the site. But then you want to go into things like gold and commodities, forex and currencies. We'll click that one. For example, um, I happen to lump uh, Bitcoin into the forex category since it's its own unique um, asset class. It's not a stock. It's not a bond. 
Um, it's not a commodity. The closest thing it is is a uh, you know a, 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 a currency proxy is what it is. It's for you know people that like Bitcoin typically like it because it's not one of the fiat currencies around the world like the U.S. dollar or the Japanese yen or the euro. And so that's going to go in that category. And you know you can then see. Uh, you know, the categories are not mutual exclusive. If I cover gold and the uh, gold, I'm going to usually cover the euro and the dollar. So that's going to be in both of those categories. You can see the categories down here. And then I wanted to mention too, if you uh, were to, uh, let's say you were interested in something like BYND, Beyond Meat, uh, and you want to see that. So you click here, it's a symbol tag. And again, whether you're a subscriber or not, and it's going to then load all posts on the home page. Again, this is not going to include the trading room post. That's a whole separate thing there. That's for gold members only. You know, silver members can access any of these posts on the front page, whether you have the key icon or not. Uh, if you're logged in a gold or silver member, you're not going to see the key icon because you're, you're, and nothing's protected. So here's a case of you know BYND. Uh, so you know we traded it recently, hit this final target, 34% profit. And when you go down here, you can see on a lot of these trades, I'll, I'll show you how the trades progress from the beginning to the end. So again, this is for the YouTube subscribers, those that are not sub members of the site, or those that are, how to navigate the site, how to find what you're looking for. We're going to get to the market update in a second. So you can see on this one, from start to finish, from a trade setup, uh, right there, you know, looking at where we're going to go long, why we're going to go long, what we're going to target, and then, you know, as we go along, I like to update the trades. First target hit, post an update on the home page. Second target hit, post an update. Going up to the third target hit, and uh, still saying, you know, an update on the trade, still bullish, charts are still constructive. Uh, added a new final target, actually, at that point. Uh, and uh, you know, continued to update that trade as it, as it went. So there it is, fourth target hit, 34% profit. Get out, take the money and run. In at the bottom, out you know towards the end of that run. I think that one kept going for a little while, uh, and um, but I forget. I haven't even looked where it is today. All right, let's now see if we have any more movement on Facebook and uh, Microsoft. I'm going to go to this screen here, and what I'll do. I have a lot of uh, streaming charts up here. You know what I can do? I can give you another one here. Uh, I have them to the left. I have quite a few charts on this mosaic. Uh, let's go here. Here we go. This is a 60-minute chart. So here's what happened to Facebook after hours. Uh, I've done uh, extensive coverage on the fangs recently, stating that just about all of them were set up in you know clearly bullish trends yet bearish technical postures. Here's one that's playing out so far. But as I always say. You know, don't read too far into the initial. Re don't read too much into the initial reaction. But this, so far, this one's pretty bad. Let's see, they're knocked down. Uh, you can see the after-hour trades, big spike up, and uh, from roughly where we close there, uh, about you know eight percent or so drop. That's taken the futures down, even though Microsoft. Let's look at that. Last I looked, it was up right before I started the video. So yeah, there's Microsoft. You can zoom in here. You can see on a one-minute chart. So even though Microsoft is a larger component, uh, there's Microsoft's only up, uh, you know, well, right now about 2% from where it closed. That's what I'm doing with the measuring tool. We close right here. This shaded area here is after our trades. And then we look at uh, Facebook. And this is all about, you know, cap weighting and how it works. You know, this is, you know, although it's not as large a component, it's it's down more, about 6.5%. So that is overcoming what's going on or overwhelming the gains in Microsoft and so you can see the queues kind of all over the place looks like Microsoft probably got to it first with the report and then uh, Facebook came after smacked down the queues now look nothing big let's not let's not read too much into this uh, we're only down from where we closed and you know three tenths of a percent or a tenth of a percent or so but let's look at the charts nothing's changed uh, you know posted updates and again today on the site reiterating that everything I've seen this you know the rally that we had which again was expected you know cut that long or at least I did you know mention covering those shorts I came home long into the weekend or uh, came home short into the weekend covered it there reverse sold out reverse back right here up that there on that 221 level 
and start to scale them back in and uh, um, I'll continue to add to that position probably tomorrow I want to see how these two go but uh, this was um, you know from from right here this was the max bounce target this was my preferred bounce target 221 so we slightly exceeded the preferred target by a very you know relatively small percentage point if I measure it up less than one percent and you can see we zoom in real tight again this line here was a max bounce target line and we exceeded that by a mere fraction of a percent so you know basis points we're talking a quarter point and uh, we're back down below it so nothing's changed I view this uh, as I said this morning to subscribers as a you know these are the first decent sell signals in, in the market in a while there's a little bit more work to be done I'm gonna get to that in a second show you what, what we need to see to help seal the deal for, for a more than a three percent or so drop that we've already had four percent uh, so this looks like you know wave one down we broke down Friday gap down Monday this looks like a snapback counter trend rallying QQQ and you know expect the next leg down soon as I mentioned uh, earlier today in the video to subscribers midday video um, one of my you know perf my favorite trend indicators is a, a very simple but effective one looking at the 9 EMA which is a signal line on the PPO right here and when that and that's the white dotted line not the blue line the white dotted line when it's above zero the trend is bullish now of course we've been in a bullish trend for quite a while it's been months now it's been a very resilient trend but we've had a couple periods where we corrected and it, and it told you hey you know trend was bearish but we snapped right back and it put the markets right back on a buy signal so not only does uh, the posture of this uh, signal line on the PPO when it's above the zero line that's the dotted line there dashed line I should say when it's above the trend is bullish and when it's below the trend is bearish and again we don't have a good example here uh, there's not a lot of time it's spent below because the trend has been pretty strong lately uh, but the other thing I like to do is look at uh, how the zero line acts as support and resistance when tested from above or below so once you get into an uptrend uh, you have as you can see right here I'll use this arrow uh, here 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 it acts as support very often once you establish a trend whether you're above or below when you're below the same thing in reverse happens that zero line often acts uh, as a resistance level so here's what we need to see and it all meshes doesn't mean I'm gonna be right but if it does it just firms up you know the the bearish case that I'm looking at the reason for being short now and the reason for adding to more shorts uh, tomorrow if that is the case most likely tomorrow uh, and that would be a reversal here right around my max bounce target zone also a rejection uh, at the zero line keeping this 60 minute trend indicator bearish for now everything else is already in play you know we already had the sell signals and follow through the following day uh, Apple as I told you before or I'm sorry subscribers I'm, this morning I mentioned you know Apple and I think last night it was too basically breakdown on Friday but it wasn't very convincing the gap down on Monday was but I said you have to take it with a grain of salt you can't give it the usual check marks that you might if it wasn't uh, a day or two before earnings anytime you take a breakout or a breakdown on a stock just before earnings you're running a very good risk that it's going to be a whipsaw signal so once earnings are out of the way which they are now and so again there's you know there's something to be said it was a breakdown so you can't completely take that away from it like I said you just don't go in uh, you know you might want to hold off on a stock like that till after they report so like QQQ I see a breakdown in a back test so far it shot a little bit above it but it stayed you know still divergent high right there the divergence is still very much intact and um, you know if we get rejected here and start to move impulsively lower that will be an additional check mark for the bearish case if we come up and we close solidly above this trend line special on a daily close that is not going to be a check mark for the bears that's going to be an X for the bears and a check mark for the bulls because they would have regained that trend line now this is just one stock it's not the entire market so it's not do or die for either bullish or bearish case but it is one factor that goes in and then the others of course uh, we have Microsoft still above trend that one had a little this one is I mentioned the subscribers in that video today in the midday video this is 
yeah, one of the ones I'll, I'll say it, giving me a little bit of pause. This is why I'm not aggressively short right now. Um, here's uh, you know one of the largest companies in the world, one of the top components of SPY QQQ. It broke down on Friday as well, like most other you know Nasdaq components right there. But it fell to a, a, the first support zone that I had here, at, uh, 6065 to about 16120. That's defined by a gap and numerous reactions from above. So what happened is I often talk about this. When you have a trend line, if you have a horizontal support level just below, you want to give that the benefit of the doubt because you have two support levels in close proximity. So Microsoft bounce gap, you know, broke down, but again, it had earnings, so I wouldn't have seen any reason to take that one in front of earnings. Uh, you want to wait. Now it's bounced up. However, I'll say this: this is this is showing you the after-hour trades. Here's where we really closed today, about that point. So what you're looking at is this long, this price channel, this upper line here. That's your upper line for the price channel, and actually goes all the way. I can draw it all the way back here. Uh, let's just put it back where I had it. And uh, there's the lower channel line, and like just like that price channel on QQQ and Apple that I covered recently. It's simple stuff. It's wash, rinse, repeat when you're in a channel. It doesn't always work forever, but uh, you go long at the bottom of the channel, and you sell or go short at the top of the channel. Uh, when you're at the top of the channel, even if you stay there for a while, you go to the bottom of the channel. Then you go up and down. So last time we were up there, we went down, we're back up there, so you're at resistance. And uh, again, you're in the channel and you recovered the channel and still above it, so you don't have a sell signal on Microsoft yet. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, but we'll watch it. We'll see what happens uh, You know, after they do their conference call, after the market trades tomorrow. Here's Facebook. Um, like I said in the recent videos, you know, all the FANG stocks. The only one that I didn't have much of an opinion on and still don't was Amazon. The technicals were not clearly bearish or bullish to me. Uh, the rest were like this. You had at this point, this is where we were the other day. He had a nice clean trend line. It broke down the other day. Impulsive selling, kickback rally, and uh, that kickback put in a divergent high. We didn't even up, we didn't even back test the trend line yet. And we probably won't at this point. We'll see what happens. Uh, like I said, these big drops can be reversed depending on what go, what they say uh, going forward and what happens. But uh, there's your support levels. And uh, so far, and this is what I expect out of QQQ, is uh, the initial leg down, counter trend rally, kickback rally, and uh, the next leg down. So that's already in play for Facebook right there. And the other thing I, I mentioned to subscribers today is we, um, you know, we we now have an active trade on TVIX. So I'm not going to go into the specifics because that chart has price targets. But uh, on VIX, I said I, I and I put up a chart this morning, a couple charts on the risk-off assets, treasury bonds, and gold, showing how they are right now helping to support their technical posture, being that they're risk-off assets, bullish, just like Bitcoin. I mentioned too, that's a you know considered risk-off asset. Um, not to the extent gold and treasury bonds, but those treasury bonds and gold have constructive charts, and uh, you have the um, you know bearish-looking charts on the indexes. So these are these are ways to you know confirm or refute analysis on the stock market. And what I said is I like to see the VIX confirm um, a breakdown in the major stock indexes, which it did. So. I want to be very clear. This is not coincidence. I had posted. I had this same trend line in these levels here for months now. You know, in fact, this here's a chart back from January 6, and so you could see that level. You know, the VIX had has bottomed out. It was at you know fallen to its support zone. I've talked about this quite a bit in the past. You know, it does, hits that level, it can trade there for a while, but that's about the low end. And then what you want to look for, you look for these divergent lows, and most importantly, just like the stock market. You know, for weeks and weeks and months now, I've been saying we need sell signals. We're in an uptrend where you have to break the trend lines. You have to see some impulsive selling. 60-minute closes below those support levels. We had a couple, you know, minor breakdowns, but we never took out the levels that we needed to to open the door for more selling. And we're still, you know, at this point, there are still some of those levels below that will do that. Um, but I uh, wanted to say here that uh, the VIX, for example, uh, you could see back, you know, uh, about a month ago, you had both downtrend line and price resistance. You had uh, two resistance levels. We'll call that a resistance zone just overhead, 1573 and 1673. So about a one point difference there. And uh, where we're at today, uh, well, you can see what happened is you had a, this was m Friday. Remember, the markets broke down Friday, but Apple didn't break down. 
and uh, we had a much bigger gap down on Monday that really helped seal the deal or, or solidify, if you would, the sell signal. That's when the VIX broke out. And it didn't just break out. You know, for example, here was a breakout on Friday, but we fell, we closed back down below. So, you know, it's a daily chart. Really what's most important is how you close those daily candlesticks. So on Monday, boom, this breakout put the, the put both resistance levels and the downtrend line clearly in the rearview mirror so that's a buy signal however like I said you know to members of the site quite a few people asked hey is it a good time to short and I said no actually that's where I was going long because remember QQQ and NQ had fallen to that support level and that's where I was looking for a bounce uh, so and we got that for for many reasons not just that we were at support but I said you know market's not going to go it's a pretty big move as it is in front of earnings. Apple hadn't yet reported Microsoft, Facebook. Therefore, I thought that move was overdone, hence the bounce. And now, as of today, this is, you know, uh, a perfect back test of both the 1573 uh, former resistance, because resistance once broken then becomes support. And look where, look where we closed, right on there. Look at that candle. And a, a nice back test of the trend line. So, just like the stock market in reverse, because that's usually how the VIX will trade, see a breakout, uh, pull back to back a back test, which only time will tell tomorrow. Uh, if I'm right, the market will drop, and then the VIX will do this and start to move up, and um, then you'll have a successful back test. So, uh, like I said about the stock market and Apple, the other in the video earlier today. Uh, Apple, for example, you know, although it broke down uh, on Monday right there, it wasn't an objective short entry. I was using this chart. It's a little better. Uh, broke down. Why was it not objective? Because we were in what I call no man's land. Smack between support. You have the price support around 300 and trend line support and resistance, the breakdown point. And so when you short at no man's land, you, you what you want to do is you want to short either right after a breakdown or when the next level breaks or on a back test and that's what we have here you know kickback as I mentioned uh, this morning you know in the post I put out that I think Apple uh, is and still is and was a, an objective short by objective that doesn't guarantee it's going to play out but by objective it just means look your stop is just above there if Apple closes solidly above that uptrend line it's a pretty good uptrend line you can even see it on the daily chart well then that's bullish so when I look at the daily chart I'm gonna zoom in in here uh, I don't know why this one's so funky here uh, well you can see it uh, let me see if I can clean it up here a little bit yeah, this chart has a lot of white space down below because these moving averages. So that's the same trend line I was showing you on the 60-minute chart. And all I wanted to mention here is this is it. So you have this, uh, what I call a minor uptrend line right here. Uh, it's not so minor. It comes off the December 3rd lows, but that's it. You had a divergent high breakdown, not just a breakdown, an impulsive breakdown. And so far, nothing but a back test. If I zoom in real tight, you will see the body of that candlestick. And I have not modified this trend line. It closed right on there. You know, I can modify it now. Come and tighten it up just a little bit. But either way, we're right on it, give or take. And uh, that's it. And so by objective, all I mean is, look, you take a shot. That's all you can do. Nobody has a crystal ball. But if you wait patiently for objective setups, you want to go long, you don't go long. You know, you could have then based on where the QQQ was and all that stuff. But uh, your next, uh, you know, objective long entry would be if we pull back to that $300 level and or that trend line just below. Or you short here, then with a stop not far above. Okay, and we'll wrap it up here. The point of this video, I usually don't cover, you know, the individual stocks and the general market updates, but it's, right now it's important because, again, these stocks are the stock market. You can strip away, there's 100 stock companies in the NASDAQ 100. You can take the other 95 and throw them in the trash as far as, you know, the importance of what they're going to do to the index because these five companies alone uh, make up the bulk of the returns because of their enormous, you know, market cap weightings. These are these are, you know, you have a couple of the only trillion dollar companies out there and they're, you know, Apple, Microsoft, and um, and uh, I think, what was it, Alphabet just recently joined those ranks not too long ago, the trillion dollar club. So that's it. And when I look at a, a, a charting perspective, nothing's changed, you know, since the other day. Well, we had a snapback rally and I view that personally, I think that's a gift for those that miss that to short here. Uh, you know, if you're bearish, if you're long, buy it, go long. 
you know, set a stop here, here, here. You certainly want to stop below there because that will probably open the door to more selling. So if, if you know, if you want to go long, you think this is going to recover, I can tell you it's not objective until you recover this channel. And Facebook's probably not going to do it um, unless they can recover this slide right now in the after hour session. But I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it up here. You guys get the point. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the point was it's not just the stock market. It's most of these fang stocks are in bearish technical postures and today you know when we close was pretty much just a back test of the uh the recently broken trend line in facebook there and uh we'll see you know the market's gotta it's gonna the futures will be trading from here on out through tomorrow morning um we still have a couple more of the fangs but as of now we have the majority have reported we have three out of the five faamg stocks um reporting uh, reports out of the way and so I think going forward this market will will pick its next direction so if the bulls are going to overwhelm it like they have they've they've been doing that for months now overwhelming bearish technicals uh, foiling some some short-term breakdowns like I said there's a little more work to be done with Microsoft and all that so if they're going to take the you know take the ball and continue to run now I think is the time to do it and what to do it Microsoft is already up uh, above that trend line we need to see Apple, uh, like I said, Facebook. There's Apple back testing. Facebook needs to get back above, uh, you know, the, the recent highs back above this trend line here. And of course, the index itself, QQQ, which is still holding uh, this larger uptrend line support. This is the little breakdown here I showed you on the 60 minute chart that we broke down on Friday and followed through on Monday. So that was a minor trend line. And again, so right now it only you know, gives me focus for these these near term targets that I have on QQQ. Uh, you know, down to here at about that 211.42 level with a minimum target of 216.18. And if that is hit, or let's say that 211.42 ish target, then what do things look like here? Because at that point, we may be down and probably will be, or almost certainly will be, down below this, triggering a more powerful longer term sell signal, and that might open the door for a deeper move. All right, we'll, we'll wrap it up here, and um, let's see what tomorrow brings. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart.